بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مضل له ويضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد إن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Today we begin hadith hadith number seven, which is the well known hadith of Abu Raqiya Tamim bin Aws Aws bin Dari. رضي الله عنه otherwise known as Tamim al-Dari and so he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala ad-deen al-nasiha that the the religion that the deen is nasiha and this word nasiha inshallah we'll get a fuller understanding of what exactly it means in the context of this hadith, because normally we would translate this word to mean sincerity, adin al nasiha, that the deen is sincerity. However, it has a a, a more a fuller meaning, inshallah, which we'll explore at the beginning part of this explanation. So the messenger said, adin al nasiha, that the deen is an nasiha, the religion is an nasiha, and so we, meaning the companions, ulna liman, we said to whom. So he replied, "Qala lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasulihi wa li a'immati al-muslimin wa a'ammatihim. So he said to Allah and to his book and to his messenger and to the rulers or the leaders of the Muslims and their general folk. And this has been reported by uh, Imam Muslim in his Sahih. So the Shaykh, and so we're looking at we're looking at the explanation of Shaykh Salih Al Shaykh, Hafizahullah. So he begins his explanation, and he says that this hadith, the hadith of Tamim al Dari, is from those great and comprehensive a hadith, which 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 in essence combined the whole of the religion. So if you remember, we looked at some of the other hadith earlier on. We looked at the hadith of uh, the, the first hadith, uh, indeed actions that were by intention, and that hadith it combines the whole religion. We looked at the hadith of uh, the halal is clear and the haram is clear, which was the previous hadith, and you know we looked at uh, the, the we, we looked at a number of hadith which the scholars that when they comment upon them they say that this hadith in essence combines the whole of the religion, right? So this is another such hadith. Um, and this is because it combines and brings together the whole of the religion, uh, meaning the rights of Allah and the rights of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the rights of the servants. Right. So this hadith speaks of the rights of Allah, His Messenger, and uh, the servants. And for, for so, so 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 from 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 this angle. The word nasiha has been used here to bring together the rights of all of those mentioned. Right? So this is the, 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 the context of the word and nasiha. Allah, his book, his messenger, the leaders of the Muslims and the general folk. And so this word nasiha, nasiha the sheikh gives, uh, he says basically it's taken from the word an nusah. This is the original noun and it's in the form of fa'ila this is just like a, a noun form a pattern of a noun form uh, fa'ila meaning nasiha it's in that same form and as for this word nusah in the, in the language of the arabs it's given two meanings the first or two explanations the first explanation is is a nusah meaning Meaning something that is completely free and pure from any, uh, you know, impurities or any other things that might be mixed in, mixed in with it. Like for example, they say asal nasih, like pure honey. 
they say honey which is nasih which means honey which is completely pure has nothing not a speck of anything else mixed mixed with it it's completely and totally pure and this is the first meaning and nasiha and nusih meaning something that is completely pure and as for the second meaning which is this is one for example two things combined together or are brought together and in, in, in a manner in which no kind of splitting or separation or aversion occurs between them both right so it's, it's a kind of like an agreement between two things or bringing two things together making them uniform making them one making them together making them agree making this is a general meaning bringing two things together to bring agreement between them both or to you you know to, to bring them together and from this they say like again in the language of the arabs they say that, that the needle which is used obviously to stitch two things together they call it nasih like the needle which is known as al khiyat they call it nasih they call it you know this is what, what, what it's labeled as this is because it you know it, it two ends it brings them together by stitching or two sides it brings them, to, brings them together by by stitching and the word nasiha what the word nasiha what it means in this in this in this hadith and the, the word nasiha the general meaning that we know of nasiha which is to give sincere advice right this is also contained within this hadith which which is the, the definition of nasiha is the intent or the desire to bring about good for the one whom one is advising this is the definition of nasiha right you must have a, a genuine sincere purpose right the intending of good for the one that you are try, that, that you are advising this is the general common meaning that we know of an nasiha and this meaning is also in the hadith this is as it relates to the last part of the hadith when we speak of the leaders of the muslims and their common folk right that, that that part is clear but as for the first three parts nasiha to allah nasiha to his book nasiha to his messenger that carries a slightly different meaning along the lines of the of the meanings that we've just discussed so just to make make that make that clear right because the common when, when we speak of the word nasiha what we commonly understand that nasiha means just giving advice giving sincere advice but here there's a difference in what is meant or explained how, how the word nasiha is explained as it relates to the first three which is allah and his book and his messenger and as it relates to the the the, the last two that are mentioned which is the leaders of the muslims and their common folk so that that will become clear inshallah so shaykh says as for the first three uh which is allah and his book and his messenger then what this means is what, what the, the word nasiha here means what it means is that there is a complete there's a connection there's a there's a there's a, a, a connection between the two between the two meaning between yourself and between allah or between yourself and between his book and between yourself and between his messenger that there is a connection between the two in the sense that one that one has given the right of the other one has fulfilled the right of the other one and this is what is meant so in other words you're bringing about an agreement and a unity or a unison between the two parties right? for example between yourself and the last messenger by fulfilling the right right so a person fulfills the right of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the rights of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in this manner he makes a connection between himself and the messenger and an agreement between himself and the messenger and you know uh, in, in 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 the sense that there's no aversion between one or the other no separation between one or the other this is what is intended so by fulfillment of the right you bring two parties together and this is on the basis of the definition the linguistic meaning of the word nush that not nush but nasiha that we looked at earlier on so so 
the Shaykh continues and he says, so it's known that the servant, that when he has, in his connection with his Lord, in that connection between him and his Lord, he has many, many rights that are upon him. And these rights can either be obligatory, which are wajib, or mustahab, which are recommended. These rights that are due upon him, which, which, which are due upon him, then they can be obligatory or they can be recommended. Wajib or mustahab. And the same applies with respect to the Qur'an. And the same applies with respect to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in the hadith then, the Messenger alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ad-deenun nasiha, that the religion consists or is an nasiha. And the first thing that we note here is that he has made the whole of the religion, he's, he's, he's made it to be nasiha, that the whole of the religion is nasiha. Again, along the lines that it will be explained shortly, inshallah. And this is because this an nasiha, which here now we can start to get the meaning of what we what is intended. The nasiha here means the fulfillment of the rights. This is what it means: the fulfillment of the rights of Allah and His Book and His Messenger, as it relates to these, the first three. As it relates to the second two, again the fulfillment of their rights, obviously the leaders and the general Muslims, but also the giving of sincere advice, which is the more general, common meaning that we understand from the word and nasiha. So uh, the Sheikh says, so the messenger made the whole of the religion to be an nasiha. And this is because an nasiha, along the lines that we've, that, that we've understood now, it brings together the whole of the religion, the obligatory aspects of it, and the mustahab, the recommended aspects of, of, of it. And then the messenger then explained it when the sahaba asked to whom, O messenger of Allah, to the end of the hadith. So the scholars have also said, regarding this phrase, ad-deenun nasiha, that the majority or the, 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 the bulk or the essence of the religion is an nasiha this, this, this type of statement that we see in this hadith is found in other parts of the sunnah as well. Like, for example, when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ad-du'a, ad-du'a, huwa al-ibadah. That ad-du'a, supplication, is worship, meaning that it is the essence of worship and likewise al hajj arafa that hajj you know the, the, the essence of hajj is the day of arafa is the standing at arafa so this hadith is along the similar lines when it is said ad din ad din nasiha that the religion is an nasiha that the essence of the religion is an nasiha and the sheikh says that when you look in this hadith at what exactly are those things to which nasiha is to be given, you will find that from, that from that angle, this hadith has indeed combined or brought together the whole of the religion. So for example, you know, when we speak about the rights of Allah, then that will include issues of belief, and it will include issues of worship. And when you speak about the rights towards, you know, Allah's messenger and the book, and likewise the leaders of the Muslims, you will find within there the rights of the creation, the rights of the dealings between the creation. And, you know, so you can see that from that angle, this hadith now brings together the whole of the religion. And so then after this, the Sahaba said, To whom? Qalu liman ya Rasulullah. To whom, O Messenger of Allah? And here, when the, the companions say, To whom? Liman. What they are referring to is to whom, meaning who is deserving, who has this right, who is deserving of this uh, nasiha. Again, we're speaking here from the angle of the rights which are due. So they, so they understood, the Sahaba understood what was meant by uh, you know, when the Messenger said, Adinun nasiha. They understood what nasiha was, but here they're asking, which is here, which, which, which here is the fulfillment of the rights that are due. But here they're asking to whom? They wanted to know and understand to whom. So the, so Allah's Messenger clarified and He said to Allah and to His Book and to His Messenger and to the leaders of the Muslims and their common, and, and their common folk. And so therefore this hadith then has brought together uh, and nasiha to these five, five, uh, you know, to, to these five. Allah, His Book, His Messenger, the leaders of the Muslims and the common folk. 
So then the Shaykh goes on to explain in detail each one. So he begins first of all, an nasihatu lillah, which is an nasihatu lillah. And this word here, when we say an nasihatu lillah, it is a word which basically brings together everything that is to be given to Allah as a fulfillment of a right. This is an nasihat, this is what is meant. And it includes that which is wajib and includes that which is mustahab, that which is obligatory as it relates to Allah and that which is recommended. So, from that which is wajib, from the right of Allah which is wajib, is to have iman in him, in his rububiyya and his ilahiyya and in his names and in his attributes and to believe that he is the Lord, the Rabb, who controls and regulates the you know this this the whole of the creation alone by himself and that he doesn't have any partners in his rububiyya and nor in him controlling and regulating the, the the command or the affairs so whatever he wills occurs whatever he doesn't will does not occur and he judges by whatever he wills and he does whatever he wishes and as for an nasiha to allah as it as it relates to his uluhiyya in his sole right to be worshipped this is that you know a person gives Allah the due right that is due to him, which is to worship him alone with all of the various types and forms of worship, and not to direct any of the types of worship except to him alone. And every worship which is directed to other than Allah, the mighty and majestic, then this would make a person to exit from and to depart from the nasiha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that he's departed from fulfill from the fulfillment of the right which is due, uh, uh, you know, which is which is due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And likewise, in Allah's names and His attributes, the way that you have nasiha to Allah, meaning that you fulfill the right of Allah, it is that you believe or that we believe that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has names, beautiful names and lofty attributes, and that there's no one who is an equal or a rival, or you know, a, 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 a sami, which is like a, a namesake, someone who deserves to have a same name. There's no one like that for Allah, the mighty and majestic. As Allah says, Hal ta'alamu lahu samiya. Do you know of a namesake for him? And like Allah says, Walam yakullahu kufu an ahad, that there is none which is a, a, a you know, like a likeness or, or a, a equal to him. Uh, and Laysa Kamitlihi Shay Uhua Sami al Basi that there is none which has uh, there is nothing which is a likeness to him and he is all hearing, all seeing. And other other such verses. So all of these things are from Nasiha to Allah, and as you can see, these relate to the, the, the belief and likewise Tawheed. And so a Muslim <coughs> believes and he affirms for Allah whatever Allah affirmed for himself of these lofty attributes. And likewise, in his uh, names and in his attributes, we believe that there is no likeness to Allah. It's like Allah Himself informs us in the verse that we've just mentioned. And when a person, when he goes to extremism in this regard, so he falls into Tajseem, for example, he starts likening the attributes of Allah to those of the creation, then this person has abandoned the Nasiha, which is obligatory. right? Meaning that he's now abandonment he's no longer fulfilling the right which is due to Allah in this regard and likewise when a person when he falls short or when he for example falls into ta'til which is to negate Allah's attributes in, in a variety of different ways then again he's abandoned and left the nasiha which was obligatory upon him meaning the fulfillment of the right that was upon him and this means again the word nasiha remember here what it means is to bring about you know, agreement and the coming together between yourself and between Allah the Mighty Majestic, right? And in the issue of Allah's names and His attributes, this is what we mean by an nasiha. And the same thing would apply to the other things, like nasiha to Allah in His worship, in the sense that you bring yourself, uh, you know, you bring you, you you connect yourself with Allah by fulfilling the obligation which is due to Him. So, when a person yeah, so when a person believes in Allah, His names and attributes, and without falling into tamthil, or ta'til, or tahrif, or ta'wil, and all these other things, which, which are deviations, then a person has indeed, he has, you know, given nasiha to Allah, 
and he's fulfilled the rights of Allah which are due to Allah and which befit him the mighty and majestic and also from 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 the nasiha to Allah so again from that thing which is a right to Allah which if one fulfills will bring you closer and connect you with Allah is that Allah is to be loved Allah is to be loved and that his command is to be followed and that his sharia is to be followed and that his khabar which is that whatever he informs you with that it is believed it is accepted and believed and you know, that, that a man accepts it with his heart purely and sincerely you know, making his heart pure and sincere in the religion and so this is also from from an nasiha and and an nasiha here here we're speaking now as it relates to ikhlas to allah because remember one of the words of an nas one of the meanings of an nasiha is like we said the pure honey asalun nasih so the word nasiha is sometimes used to refer to sincerity as well so here it also comprises the meaning of sincerity to be sincere in one's statements and one's actions is is something that is a right of allah upon us this is allah's right upon us that we be sincere in our in our statements and in our actions so by being sincere in our statements and actions we are fulfilling a right to allah and therefore you know giving nasiha to allah in in in, in that sense with that meaning and uh, when a, when there occurs in the heart of a person like for example when he does something or he does an action for the sake of other than allah like for example arriya for showing off or to be you know seeking to be heard of heard of or heard about and this person hasn't fulfilled the right of Allah upon him. And then there are other things as well, which are things which are due to Allah, but which, which are recommended. They are mustahab. And like, for example, um, there, are, there are other things, for example, yeah, which, which are mustahab, uh, the Sheikh mentions uh, regarding the... Uh, right of Allah, which is that a person that a person doesn't become attached beyond a certain level to other than Allah, in the sense in you know in 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 in, in the sense like uh, uh, here we're speaking in the sense that um, not in a sense which 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 is prohibited because sometimes you know you can have attachments you know with 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 your family and your wife and your children and other Muslims, but you know that attachment should be in moderation and you know so this is what, what is being referred to here that sometimes there are things which are mustahab for Allah and that you keep your 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 your, your attachments in moderation and that you 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 observe the word uses uh, that you make muraqaba of Allah meaning that you are mindful of the fact that Allah is watching you so you observe Allah not in the sense that you're observing but in the sense that you are mindful of the fact that he is watching you this is what is meant by muraqaba, that you know you are, you are observant of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that you know that He is watching you. And that this is what you should have both in, this, in secret and in open, and likewise in uh, also as it relates to the mustahab affairs, that a person should always bring to mind him, him, him standing in front of Allah the mighty majestic in the hereafter, that this is something he always brings to his mind. And this is this is an affair that he that if he does, uh, you know, these are from the mustahab affairs for him to do that, right? That he always brings this to mind. He's mindful of it. He's observant. Wallah, he's watchful and he's careful. This is something that is mustahab, right? So this all this also comes into the rights of Allah, which 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 which, which are mustahab. So the Sheikh says that the nasiha to Allah then it contains those things which are wajib. It contains those things which are mustahab. And you know, some of them the Sharia has made obligatory as it relates to the right of Allah, and others the Sharia has made them mustahab as it relates to the right of Allah. And then the Shaykh moves on to the book, which is the saying of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, 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 in the hadith, wa kitabihi, wa li kitabihi, wa li kitaban to his book. And this means the nasiha which the book of Allah is deserving of or which has which it has a right over you and what does it mean this means that a person gives the Quran its due right and what does that mean what does that entail 
it entails first of all that a person has absolute certainty yaqeen that it is the speech of Allah the mighty majestic well, that it is the speech of Allah the mighty majestic that Allah spoke it that Allah spoke those words in the Quran and that it is a great and mighty sign in fact it is the greatest of the signs that have been that, that has been given to any of the prophets the Quran is the greatest sign and that it is the far reaching uh, you know the proof and it, uh, up until the establishment of the hour and also that this Quran it contains guidance and light like Allah says in the hadal Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwa that indeed this Quran guides to that which is upright and also that whatever judgments are found in the Quran that it is obligatory to implement them so whatever Allah commanded, commanded in the Quran then it is obligatory for us to implement them like for example uh, as the Shaykh will clarify, like for example, when there are certain commands for certain punishments that need to be meted out, then they need to be they need to be fulfilled. So the commands that a person believes that the commands need to be fulfilled, and likewise, that whatever the Quran has prohibited you from, it's obligatory to keep away from them, and whatever the whatever the Quran has informed us about, or whatever Allah has informed us about in the Quran, that we believe it, that we affirm it and accept it, and we don't have any doubts or hesitations about it. And other such things. So these are the rights of the Quran upon us. We believe it is a speech of Allah. Allah spoke it. It is His words. We believe in the commands therein, that it is guidance, that it is light, and that its its commandments are to be implemented. We fulfill them, and so on and so forth. This is the nasiha to the Book of Allah. Um, and then the Shaykh continues, and he says that there are also so th- those were the obligatory aspects of the nasiha to the Qur'an and then the Shaykh says the Qur'an also has the mustahab aspects so what are the mustahab aspects? they are for example that a person he he you know recites uh, a great deal of the Qur'an you know he writes he recites often the Qur'an and that you know he, he that when he recites it you know he he he, he reflects upon it you know, he doesn't just recite it in his mind's absent, that he reflects upon it, he makes tadabbur, he contemplates and reflects upon it. And likewise that he makes treatment by way of it. Right? For example, doing ruqya, using, using the Qur'an as a ruqya, or using the Qur'an as a protection, and so on and so forth, and treatment. And other such things which we know have come in the sunnah, which explain, or which outline, the ways in which the Qur'an can be used in certain instances, like we mentioned, like in the ruqya, reciting the Fatiha or Ayatul Kursi or the last three surahs and so on and so forth. The ways that we find in the Quran, in, in the Sunnah uh, regarding how the Quran can be used as a protection or as a cure for, for, for uh, certain things. And so all of this then is, is, is the kind of connection between you and between the Quran. This is the Nasiha between the servant and the Quran. And you know, it means, again, going back to the meaning of the word Nasiha, it means the bringing together, you know, between this and between that. And so a person's concern then is that he should always be concerned with, 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 with fulfilling the right that is due upon him. And as it relates to the Qur'an, then we've just clarified what this, what specifically this is. Then, the next, uh, the, 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 the shaykh moves on to the, the nasiha to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So how does this occur? This occurs by obeying the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So a person fulfills this right of obedience. So whatever he commanded, then a person fulfills it, and whatever he prohibited from, a person keeps away from it, and whatever information or news that he brought, that a person believes it, believes it firmly. And, you know, that, that he only worships Allah by way of whatever the messenger brought and by nothing else. Meaning that he adheres to the sharia and he adheres to the sunnah. And that he also believes that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the seal of the prophets. And that any or, and every claim to messengership after him is a lie. It's a lie, it's a falsehood and it is, it is transgression. And that the Messenger 
He is the one to be obeyed. As Allah says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ That whatever the messenger gives to you, then uh, commands you with, then, then fulfill it, and whatever he prohibits you from, then keep away from it. And likewise, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is loved due to the fact that Allah commanded us to love him, and likewise, because of what he deserves from us, from this obligatory type of love that you know that we put the love of the messenger ahead and in front of the love whatever love that we have you know, whatever other loves and attachments that, that we have and all of this then is from the nasiha to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and again this is from the obligatory and the the obligatory and the mustahab uh, aspects apply in this case uh, as well and then the Shaykh moves on to the leaders of the Muslims, Wali Aimmatil Muslimin, as this was mentioned next. So he says, the Nasiha to the leaders of the Muslims is that they are given their right which Allah has given them. Because the leaders have certain rights that Allah has granted them over the servants, over their subjects. And so to fulfill, to give them Nasiha means to fulfill those rights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained these rights in the Quran. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa explained these rights in the Sunnah. For example, to obey them in whatever constitutes good. And to not obey them in whatever is disobedience. And that to be with them and to unite with them upon truth and guidance. And in, what, in anything which we don't know to be disobedience. And that, you know, that we, we make the hearts of the servants to be uh, united with them and you know that we unite behind them and that we supplicate for them all of these are from the rights that are due uh, from us to those who are in charge over us the leaders of the Muslims and likewise from this from those rights is that we do not rebel against them with the sword you know and to do this is obedience to Allah the mighty majestic and obedience to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that we you know, pledge allegiance to the leader of the Muslims, and that a person doesn't die except that he's pledged allegiance to the leader of the Muslims, and you know that whenever the leader orders him with something, that he fulfills it so long as it does not involve disobedience, and likewise, uh, that he withholds from anything that might mean disobedience to Allah. So, for example, if they command him to do anything which involves disobedience to Allah. Then he's not to be, not not to not, not to obey them in that, as it relates to, for example, the obligatory affairs and things like that, and uh, you know. So if 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 he orders them with something that is obligatory or something of that nature, he obeys them. If he orders them with something which is which opposes, what is disobedience, then he doesn't doesn't obey them. And likewise, as it relates to the mustahabbat, you know, the 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 recommended affairs. Then he can he 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 she should follow them in that as well, and uh, likewise an issue of ijtihad when the when the ruler has an ijtihad, then a person leaves his own opinion and follows the ijtihad of the imam the Muslim imam, because in that there is rectification and benefit for the for the land and for the servants, as the people of knowledge have established in this particular issue the the sheikh goes on to clarify, and likewise. From the rights and from their rights and from the nasiha to, to them, is that a person strives to give them sincere advice, like advice in the other sense of the word, like uh, giving advice, uh, like the advice, you know, the the, the, con the mean the common meaning of the word advice that we know, in the sense that he informs them and makes them aware <coughs> of whatever errors they may be falling into or whatever limits they may be transgressing as it relates to the Sharia. And this, this status or this, this level here of giving this advice is something which is fard kifaya. Right? That if someone from the ummah does it, from the people of knowledge, then it, the obligation is removed from everybody else. Right? So this, this, the, the, this is something that is explained by Ibn Daqiq al Eid, one of the scholars from the past who has also written an explanation of an nawis 40 hadith, and in there he clarifies that with respect to this issue of advising the rules, it's not for everybody in, you know, as long as some people are doing it, like for example the scholars, then that obligation has been fulfilled on behalf of the rest of the ummah. 
right? It's because it is fard kifaya. And also from the right, it is from the right of the leader of the Muslims that he is advised in the sense that someone comes to him, explains to him the truth, shows him, you know, shows it to him, and explains to him whatever Allah has commanded and whatever the messenger has commanded, and that, that a person aids him in obeying Allah. And that he, that he's, you know, he, he makes him right in that affair, he straightens him out in that affair, and, you know, he, he, he explains to him um, that, you know, what, what he may sometimes fall into of disobedience and opposing the command of Allah. This is the right that is, that is due upon us, from, uh, that is due uh, to the waliul amr on behalf of the, of the Muslims in general. And the Sheikh says, but this nasiha, this fulfillment of this obligation and this giving of advice, to the rule of the Muslims has come with certain conditions and rules and guidelines which are well known when we go back and refer to these ahadith which are clarified and from uh, you know from 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 from, from those people who clarified these rules and guidelines uh, at this particular point is Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahimahullah because Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali also has a very detailed explanation of an nawawi's 40 hadith which is called Jami ul-Ulum al-Hikam and in this book, at, the, at this particular point in this hadith, he brings um, quotations from Ibn Abbas and other than them, who explain the manner in which, the, the, the mannerisms and the conditions which a person must fulfill when he gives advice to the ruler or the leader of the Muslims. So the Shaykh then goes on to cl- clarify some of those uh, pieces of advice. And... Uh, so he goes on to mention some of those pieces of advice, and inshallah ta'ala, I think we'll, uh, we'll perhaps leave them for the next session, because uh, I think we've reached half of the hadith, and we'll just leave, uh, we'll stop the session now so we can complete the other half in, in the le- next le- lesson, inshallah ta'ala. So, yeah, so, so the conditions that need to be fulfilled, then inshallah we'll elaborate upon them in the next lesson that we have, inshallah ta'ala, which is uh, next week. So with that said, inshallah, we'll conclude today's lesson here and we'll continue, inshallah, with the remainder of this hadith. And likewise, we'll probably also commence with the explanation of Shaykh Ibn Taymin, rahimahullah, of the same hadith and look at some of the benefits that he's uh, picked out, rahimahullah, from this particular hadith, starting from the next lesson as well, inshallah. Barakallahu fiqh, jazakallahu khair. Take care,